Hello, everyone. Welcome to Washington Gun Law TV. I'm your host, Washington Gun Law President William Kirk. Hey, we have a very special guest with us today. I want everyone to welcome State Representative Brad Clippert from the 8th District out of Benton County. Uh, Representative Clippert, thank you so much for being here with us today. You're most welcome. Thank you, sir. Hey, just uh, some background here about Representative Clippert. He was born and raised in Sunnyside, Washington. He served in the State House since 2008. Uh, Representative Clippert holds a master's degree in teaching from Center University in Tacoma. He's taught at every level of education, elementary, middle school, high school, and college levels. He holds a bachelor, holds bachelor's degrees from Northwest University in Kirkland in behavioral science and biblical studies. Representative Clippert, Clippert is a 27-year veteran of law enforcement. He serves communities in both Western and Central Washington. He currently serves as Deputy Sheriff with the Benton County Sheriff's Department. He also serves as a school resource officer and is dedicated to keeping students, faculty, and the community safe during the academic year. And before his time in Central Washington, he served uh, with the Pierce County Sheriff's Department. And he also has 30 years of, uh, over 30 years of military experience. He served as a helicopter pilot and holds the rank of commander in the Washington State Army National Guard. So, Representative, that's quite an impressive resume. So thank you very much for being here with us today. You're welcome. And I just will correct that I am the, a commander in the Washington State Guard. Okay, thank you. Thank you for correcting that. Um, a lot of viewers on Washington gun law have been a little concerned about some legislation that's been kicking around in Olympia this year. And I wanted to kind of get it straight from the inside and some information about you about three bills in particular that I'd like to talk with you about. The first one is engrossed substitute bill 5038. Some people are calling it an open carry ban. I don't think it's a complete ban on open carry. But that legislation says uh, that this bill would make it a crime to openly carry on the person or in a vehicle, a firearm or other weapon, if the person is participating in or attending a demonstration in a public place. And it also would have similar restrictions on capital grounds. Um, now, I understand that that bill has already passed out of the Senate and is now in the House. Can you give our viewers a little update on where that bill sits? Right. There was both a House bill and a Senate bill. And um, both uh, of those bills passed out of the, ju the Judiciary Committee. And uh, right now, the House bill is in the Senate, and the Senate bill is in House Rules Committee. Okay. And I understand that there was one uh, amendment made to the bill, which originally it was going to prohibit open carry within a thousand feet of a demonstration. And I believe that has since been amended to 250 feet. Is that your understanding? That is, that is also my understanding. And we attempted to. Another couple amendments on that bill that did not pass that would have been very advantageous. Such as? Well, I uh, offered an amendment that would say it's an open carry bill. And now this open carry applies to a, a, a weapon in a vehicle. I said, well, if I'm going hunting afterwards and I happen to put my hunting rifle or shotgun in the trunk of my car, it's not loaded, it's not visible, and I have no intention of openly carrying it in that demonstration, why should it be unlawful for me to have that in my locked trunk where no one can see it? And they didn't accept the amendment and it would have made me total sense that they would have. You know, Representative, in talking to some of the lawful and uh, responsible gun owners in the state, one of the concerns is, as you know, there's been a huge increase in first time firearms purchasers because of general, the pandemic and all the uh, chaos that that's created, general lawlessness. I'm a King County resident, so We've certainly experienced our, our fair share of that. And so a lot of people are wanting to go out and get their concealed pistol licenses. But again, due to pandemic concerns, the lo local law enforcement agencies have been shut down or significantly limited in resources and their ability to contact the public. And I have people that are waiting eight or nine months now to uh, even get a CPL. So if they wanted to go to a public demonstration, if this legislation is passed without a CPL, they really are in, not in a position where they could defend themselves. Would you agree with that? Well, I would certainly defend their Second Amendment rights to our U.S. Constitution, and they should be able to be defend themselves at all times, especially uh, keeping our Washington State and our U.S. Constitution in mind. So, yeah, and, and anything I can do, and we are, in fact, actively working on helping to improve the citizens' ability to get their concealed pistol permits and, and to carry in that manner so they can, in fact, defend themselves, their homes, and their families. I also understand that this piece of legislation says that a, a permitted demonstration is obviously anyone in which a permit has been granted by a, a, a government agency 
are a gathering of merely 15 people or more uh, assembled for a singular event? Is that still the definition as the, with the bill as it's moving forward? To the best of my knowledge, that is true. Yes, sir. Okay. Okay. Overall, what do you think the likelihood that this bill is going to be, uh, be signed into law and in what form do you anticipate that this, if it is passed, will, will be in? Unfortunately, uh, the, the, in the current administration, that particular bill has a good chance of being passed into law. However, I plan on offering my amendment again on the floor of the House of Representatives if it comes up on the House, the Senate bill, and uh, we will continue to fight it because we uh, strongly, we, the House Republican Caucus, strongly support our citizens' Second Amendment rights. And we greatly appreciate that. Thank you. Uh, I want to talk to you about another piece of legislation. Uh, this is House Bill 1164. It's called the High Magazine, uh, the High Capacity Magazine Restriction. I think there's a Senate Bill 5078 that's kicking around also that's a companion bill. And it is a measure that would ban the manufacture, possession, or sale, transfer, et cetera, of magazines that are capable of holding. At one point, it was originally 10 rounds of ammunition or more. I understand that there's been amendments to that bill to now uh, restrict it at 17 rounds or more. Is that accurate? Um, not this year, but previously it was 10 rounds. I offered amendment to raise it to 15 rounds. And because I happen to carry on duty as a law enforcement officer, uh, said magazine and, and my service weapon, and they accepted that uh, um, amendment back then. As to the current amount, I don't know, because fortunately that bill has not come before our committee this year. And so I think that the big concern that you and I and a lot of uh, lawful responsible gun owners share is that a 10, man, a 10 round magazine is a, is a very restricted number. Many of the most commonly carried handguns for self-protection, the Glock 19, for example, one of the most popular guns on the planet, oftentimes it will exceed the 10 round limit. I'm sure that your service weapons and your law enforcement career oftentimes add 10 or more rounds to them. Exactly correct. And the other thing that I raised to the majority party is if I have multiple magazines on my person, I can drop one magazine and insert another one uh, faster than most people can. And it doesn't take much practice to be able to do that. So it's really irrelevant if I have uh, 10 rounds, 15 rounds or more, because with, if I have multiple magazines on my possession, I can change rounds very quickly. And so what's the use of the ban? And isn't that the fallacy with all of these high capacity magazine restrictions is that it really does not serve any purpose other than to affect lawful and responsible gun owners. I totally and completely agree. Uh, the only people that's going to affect is those who unlawfully possess and unlawfully use weapons. Now, when I was taking a look at this legislation, too, I, I found this very telling. And I know that this was, I believe, proposed by Attorney General Ferguson and then sponsored by several Democrats. Uh, this, the legislature acknowledges that in Duncan v. Becerra, the United States Court of Appeals for the Ninth Circuit, not a particularly pro-Second uh, Amendment circuit, by the way, found that California's law creating a blanket ban on large capacity magazines was unconstitutional. The legislature does not intend to create a blanket ban, but only to limit the prospective sale or transfer of large capacity magazines. That seems mildly disingenuous. Have you had an opportunity to view, it, uh, to view this, this text? And what, what do you, what's your opinion on that? I have not viewed that text, but I agree with that text. I need to correct myself because I told you just moments ago, the only people that that bill, high capacity magazine bill would affect was those who unlawfully possess or use weapons. Those are the people that won't affect. Right. The only uh, uh, people that this bill would affect is those who lawfully possess and use weapons. It would have a negative effect on them, but the criminals, it's not going to affect them in any way, shape or form. And that piece of uh, legislation and or that uh, consideration by the courts, I totally and completely agree with. I appreciate that. Um, it looks like this bill at this particular moment hasn't picked up a lot of steam. Unfortunately, we've had a couple of pretty nationally prominent incidents in the last week involving mass shootings. Um, do you have a sense of where this bill is headed, if anywhere, right now? Right now, I have seen no movement on that bill this year myself. Okay. And the legislative session this year is up when without a special session? My understanding is it ends on the 25th of April. Okay. And so in your experience, is it likely that this legislation could pick up and actually gain enough steam to, to reach passage in that short period of time? The Speaker of the House has the, uh, the ability to pick up a bill and move it forward at any time as she chooses. However, it does not appear as if this bill will be moving forward this year. Okay. Okay. Good to know. 
Uh, the last piece of legislation I wanted to talk to you about is House Bill 1229, which is an assault weapon ban. And that legislation says if passed, this legislation would ban the possession, manufacturing, distribution, import, transfer, sale, or offer for sale or purchase uh, any assault weapon as ex except for that which would be authorized in the new law. And then it names 62 specific weapons but also mentions AK-47s and AK-74s uh, in all forms, as well as AR-15s in all forms. It appears that this legislation had its first reading in the House on January 18th, and it too seems to be mildly dormant. Can you tell us what efforts the GOP is making to counter this, uh, what we believe is a horrible piece of legislation? Well, I haven't seen that, that to predict nope particular bill move this year in any of the committees that I sit on. I sit on the Public Safety Committee and the Judiciary Committee that those bills generally come through the Judiciary Committee. It has not come through the Judiciary that Committee this year that I recall. And uh, we will always stand up and fight for that, uh, for your right to be able to use. I mean, I carry as a law enforcement officer an AR-15. It's not a fully automatic weapon. It's a semi-automatic weapon, as, as are many of the weapons that I own. And so, you know, we will stand for your right to carry and to possess those weapons. You know, I think the thing that concerns uh, a lot of our viewers is that it seems that uh, much of this gun legislation that's been uh, bantered about in this state, uh, and I will say a lot with Attorney General Ferguson in place, he seems to, to have an agenda, an anti-Second Amendment agenda, but a lot of it seems to really be far more restrictive to lawful and responsible gun owners and doesn't do anything to solve the gun violence problem. Do you agree with that assessment? I agree with that assessment 100%. As we talked about earlier, these gun laws are only going to affect law abiding citizens. Those who choose not to abide by the law, those law violators are be, gonna be the ones who are gonna do what they wanna do anyway. And these laws will do nothing to affect them. A couple final questions for you, Representative. One most important one is this. Uh, listen, we got a lot of concerned viewers out there, a lot of people that are very passionate about their Second Amendment rights and protecting them so they can protect their families. How best can they go about, how best can they go about getting involved in this and helping folks like you out uh, to fight against some of this legislation? Number one thing, contact the Washington State Speaker of the House by either phone or email and contact the Senate Majority Leader by phone or email, by the hundreds and the thousands. And do it as an individual from your heart. Don't get a form letter, don't all say the same thing. Speak from your heart, either send them an email or send or call their phone. And I don't care if you do it on the weekends because then they'll come to work on Monday morning and there will be their phone message machine filled with hundreds and thousands of calls saying, do not pass these anti-constitutional bills in Washington state. We stand strong for our constitution. We stand strong for our constitutional rights. And we want you to do the same for us because you've sworn an oath to support the Washington state and the US constitution. It's great advice, great advice. And for those of you watching at home, we'll post all of those links to all of those down below in the description section. So you'll be able to see it. Uh, listen, uh, part of being a responsible and lawful gun owner, uh, like what we preach here at Washington Gun Law, uh, gun law folks, is to know the law at all times and how it applies to you in each and every instance that you may find yourself in. You can learn more about your gun rights and your responsibilities, as well as keeping apprised of all these important legislative updates at WashingtonGunLaw.com. Representative, thank you so very much for your time today. We greatly appreciate it. And please continue to fight the good fight for us on our Second Amendment rights. Thank you for your time today. Thank you, sir, at your service.